Today we're going to take this ordinary rose photo and transform its colors. Hello and welcome to an Affinity Revolution tutorial. If you would like to follow along with the same photo I'm going to be working on, I've included a download link in the description. The first thing we need to do is open the photo, and to do that we can use the shortcut Command O and navigate to wherever that is saved on your computer and press open. The first thing we're going to do to the rose is change the rosebud color. And to do this, we need to select it. We can select it by using our selection brush tool. So click on this brush over here, and we're just going to paint a selection over the rosebud. So as you can see, if you click and drag or click anywhere, it will add to your selection. The selection brush tool naturally adds to whatever selection you're making. But you can also change it to subtract if you make a mistake and take away from any selection you've already made. You can go back to add and add it once again. Or you can use the option key on your keyboard and while holding that down, it will make it subtract also. Once you have a rough outline of the rows, you'll notice that we still are missing a couple pieces like down here, over there, and up there. We need to get a little bit closer so that we can really get just those pieces. To zoom in, press Command plus, and to make your brush size smaller, press the bracket keys underneath the plus sign on your keyboard. So the left one makes it smaller and the right one makes it bigger. Now with a small brush, we can click right in there and get over here as well, and then come navigate up here and get this little piece. All right, that looks pretty good. I'd say we have a good selection. Let's press Command-0 so we can see our whole photo. And now we are going to change the color of the rosebud. To do this, we're going to press on the Adjustments icon, which is this circle down here, and then come to the HSL. On this one, we can change the hue by dragging this slider around. As you can see, it's quite a variety of colors we can make our flower. To make it look a little more natural, you can change the blend mode from normal to color. So after doing that, play around with the hue slider a little bit. I like mine blue. You can change the saturation. Mm. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And you can also change how light or dark the flower is. I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter. Once you found a color that works for you, you can press the X. And now we've made this hue, saturation, and luminosity adjustment layer, which we can check on and off to see our changes to the flower. The next thing we're going to do is make the background black and white. To do this, we need to select the background. And since right now we have everything selected except for the background, we need to inverse our selection. We can do this by coming to the top and using our select drop-down menu, click on invert pixel selection. So now we have the entire background selected. The next thing we need to do is go back to our adjustments and click on the black and white option. Now with these sliders, we can choose how light or how dark a certain color in our photo becomes. I like making my reds a little bit brighter in this photo, maybe my yellows a little bit brighter, but then making my greens darker. A lot of it is a predominantly green background. If you want to change a color, but you don't know which color category that is in the photo, you can use the picker and click and drag in an area that you want to affect, and it will automatically change that area. Once you've adjusted the photo the way you like, you can press the X, and now we've successfully made the black background black and white. To get rid of the marching ants, just press Command-D, D for deselect, 
And as you can see, we have just transformed our photo of the rose in a matter of minutes. So if that's all you wanted to learn how to transform this rose, then you are done. If you want to stick around, I'll share two other tips with you for future projects. The first tip for you is that you can adjust your adjustment layers anytime by just double clicking on the icon over here and it'll bring back up your sliders so you can adjust them again in case you made a mistake. The second tip is that you can reload any selection you've already made by command clicking on this icon. So if I hold down command and press on that, I have now selected the background again and can do anything else I would like to do with it. And then I can press command D to deselect it again. So those are your two bonus tips at the end of this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. I'd love to help you out with any personal projects that you're working on. And if you want to see more tutorials on Affinity Photo, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll be coming out with some more great tutorials in the upcoming weeks and months. Other than that, that wraps up our tutorial for today, and I'll catch you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.